Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. Boy, I tell you, I don't know why, why, why we should be sitting in here today. I mean, it's such a beautiful day outside. And I tell you what, and what I've got this guy here with me today. Uh, besides just being Steve Buell, my friend, he happens to be sitting on uh, probably one of the most prominent uh, positions in the state of Oregon. That is uh, being a uh, being a, uh, uh, a on on the board, the school board, a board member, if you will. I mean, in all due respect, to, you know, folks, that is probably the most that, that is the top notch job here in the state of Oregon. That is our teachers, our futures, if you will. And so what we're going to do today, this time around, is that uh, we're going to give you an update. We're going to give you an update across the board. You know, how does the election work? Uh, what is it at stake? Uh, uh, who are the candidates here in the Portland Public School Arena? And, uh, and I tell you, if you don't know Steve, I've known him for years and whatever. You know, he's been in this business for a number, number of years. Uh, he's, been, he's been a school board uh, member back in the days when he was still teaching. And then he, he he basically retired out of the school system and came back to the back and now he's back doing the work again and again and typically he and I were back in those days with Herb Carthon and others and and here we are today Steve and I we're still standing folks still fighting for those kids still fighting for the future okay so with that Steve how you doing doing pretty good fantastic do you still you still you still acknowledge the vets by the way you always do. <laughs> right? you, you recognize the vets, right? <laughs> you okay. bet. I almost got, by the way, I almost got Steve, by the way, back in the days when I was a Marine recruiter, when I came to Portland, Oregon. I almost got him. I almost got yeah, him. Yeah, right. And the only way he was able to get out of the deal, he, he joined the Portland Public Schools and got on the school board, and I left him alone. He became an asset, though. Trust me, we we worked very closely <laughs> together. But uh, just a little side note on that piece is that I want to make sure that you, as, as usual, I wear my cover because I want to make sure you vets get out there and get your benefits. And, again, thanks for serving. Very, very important. And um, and I hope you're you're doing well. Okay. So with that, we're just going to bring Steve right along. And Steve, you know, just for the benefits of of some of the uh, folks that are out here and the in the out that are viewing with us today, give me just a little brief background of who Steve Buell is and kind of like how you got into the system, the education system. Just bring him up date real quick. Just you. Well, just I was a school teacher for 40 years, yes. and I had gotten involved in the school board back in the 1980s when you were uh, running the Portland Observer, and yeah, right. and we took on some pretty big issues, and I stayed kind of in touch with the schools, but didn't really run again until two years ago when I came back onto the school board. I also uh, was one of the founding members of an organization called Oregon Save Our Schools, which is a big anti-testing group, really, and anti-corporate reform. Uh, in fact, you may have seen the editorial in today's paper mm -hmm. saying that they should let the testing go on and mm -hmm. leave it alone. And I'm just laughing because we're making a lot of progress when they start writing those types of editorials. You yes. know you're pushing your finger in the pie someplace exactly. and kind of upsetting some people. So uh, it was a great editorial to see. Exactly, exactly. Well, i tell you what, folks, what we're going to do, we're going to really let Steve talk this point in time. It's going to be sort of like an overview of education across the board, not only just in Oregon, but across the board. Because with due respect, we're still having some major issues that are in the classroom, i.e., as you know, our youth, our futures for that matter. So what we're going to do, we're going to let, again, like I said, we're going to let uh, Steve speak today. And we're going to start off by basically saying, how does the election work and what is it that's at stake? And he's going to just kind of incorporate that with reference to bringing things up to, to date and at the same time give you a better understanding of why it's so important for you to get out there to the polls. Steve? Well, well. as you know, Bruce, you've got about a half a billion dollar budget in the schools. You have 48,000 kids uh, that you're educating. You have about 100 major buildings, some sites, 10 or more acres in the city of Portland. You've got 6,000 employees. And the school board is in charge of all that. They hire the superintendent to run the schools, but they're in charge. The school board is in charge of that. And so hopefully people would pay careful attention to the elections and get people on there who they think would do the best job. It's not really what happens, though, mm -hmm. all the time. Right. And we'll talk about that in a yes, minute. Yes, very much so. But uh, there's a lot of issues, big issues that are coming up, and there's a lot of election issues. Mm -hmm. And they're kind of not the same thing because the election issues are built around who's on the board and the right. relationship of the board to places. And the, and the big issues are built more around the large school system. Uh, for instance, we've got boundary changes coming up throughout the whole city of Portland. We've got... 
a lot of problems within the special ed and the English as a second language. Uh, we've got the neighborhood schools. How are we going to deal with those versus the focus option schools, the kind of schools that people can send their kids to that are not in the neighborhood. We've got deciding what you're going to do with the middle schools versus the kindergarten through eighth grade schools because some of the K-8, the older kids, there's not enough kids to really have good programs and have it seem to be uh, efficient financially. Uh, we have a issue around the superintendent's goals and approaches to the whole situation. Uh, we have testing, which is a big hubbub, which I just mentioned, in the state, and how do we deal with that te testing in the school district? We've got a lot of conflict between principals and teachers that it's going on that we need to begin to settle out. Uh, we have uh, the idea of talk versus action and the equity. So there's been a lot of talk about equity and there was some nice things that the school board's done, but really haven't really gotten down and brought some of those equity ideas down into the classroom. Uh, in a sensible way to help kids. Uh, a lot of talk, not so much action. Uh, we've got the idea of what do you really put in the schools? How does a school work? What programs do you put in each of the schools? Mm -hmm. And it's not so much in the high school, but in the elementary school and middle grades. Mm -hmm. Those are those are big questions coming up. Uh, we've got uh, how do we hire, both around the administration. Mm -hmm. We have an awful lot of people who move up through our who move up through Portland Public Schools, who taught as vice principal, who taught or been vice principals and they move up. So good, there's a lot of questions around how they move up. Mm -hmm. You know, how, are we getting the best people? Mm -hmm. Are we, we haven't, we don't go outside very often and find people. And what is it that, what kind of administrators do we want? And the same, there's a lot of talk about hiring around uh, people of color. How mm -hmm. do you get more people with, who have, who are people of color into your schools? How do you get more uh, uh, teachers uh, with uh, language backgrounds that mm -hmm. are not just English mm -hmm. and uh, you've got a lot of talk about what do you do in the middle grades or middle grades are a mess which you know you've heard me talk about that for yeah. what five six eight years yes, I don't know how long I've been here yeah. well let me see since 1981 <laughs> our middle grades are a mess and so Stay those right. are all big issues that yeah. are out there right. so right. when you think about the elections you have to think how will these people respond to these big issues and those are the big issues, but they're not necessarily the election issues, because the election issues are built around what's taken place. There's been on the school board, you really have a 412 system. Four, one, You've two. got four yeah. people who have been running the school board okay. for the last couple of years, last two years. Who are they? Can you list well, them? you had Pamela Knowles, okay. you had uh, Greg Belisle, you had Ruth Atkins, you had Matt Morton. And then you have kind of in the, you had uh, Bobby Regan, who's not really a member of those four people. Mm -hmm. She's she's more independent, thoughtful about things. And then you also have then uh, Tom Curler and I, who have ended up on the long, the short end of an awful lot of votes and an awful lot of ideas. How many teachers of that group? How many teachers? Well, there's... Besides yourself, Belial taught a year mm -hmm. in music, and Pamela Knowles substituted a year. That's substituted, it. and you, you, that's you, you and I taught forty-three years. Mm -hmm. But uh, so there's this split, and three of those four people are leaving. So we're voting to replace those three people. Well, it doesn't take much, uh, much to figure out that if you had one or two people that shifted towards the positions that. I've been taking and and also Tom Curler has often been taking and you could have a huge shift in the, in the school board and there's a lot of elections that I mean there's a lot of election issues mm -hmm. that come into play with this shift and I, I just wrote down a couple of them one okay. is uh, uh, where, how, how we spend the money do you spend That's it in the classroom very, very important. do you spend it in the processes mm -hmm. do you spend it around the testing stuff or do you spend it for reading teachers, librarians, counselors, those types of things? And that's a big deal. We we spent eight million dollars once in the middle in the spring. Mm -hmm. Or well it's really in the in the end of the winter. We spent eight million dollars and we only spent six hundred thousand of that approximately, not even that really, for teachers in the classroom. We had this eight million came up, we had money to spend mm -hmm. and we spent Less we spent over seven million, and it didn't include one teacher in the class. Where'd the money go? 
Oh, process stuff and process stuff. Process. People are still asking questions and about the art consultants. Tax. And what about the art tax? I mean, that, that, yeah, that's I know, I know. You get yeah, your letters I in the mail. Yeah, I want to know where, 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 where is the money? money? Well, the where money, the did money did go going? into the arts from the art tax. It all of it? Didn't I think pretty much all of it? It went into art-related things where it didn't go for art teachers if it did, but. And, and a second, a second one is how are the decisions made? Yeah. Now they're pretty much been made in the back room. You had. Well, what uh, happened to the board? Well, the board isn't in the back room because you can't put them all in the back room because you have to declare that it's an open meeting if you put them all in the back exactly. back room. And so basically, what you had is the two chair people who are yeah. all have always been from those four people, mm -hmm. and they sit down with the superintendent, maybe one other person, the, the superintendent's assistant, and then they they talk about what's to take place in the back room and they'll bring in a couple administrators that have to do with those with those particular uh, issues that they're dealing with and then it's pretty much decided there and then it comes out to the board and they have four votes and so they bring that forward the board votes to pass it and off they go so you're not a table in the, not in discussions. that no no so no. who's representing the kids uh, well those four people who were on the board three of whom are leaving and then you've got uh, the, the, one of the one of the messes that's going on in Portland Public Schools is that the administration, that as far as the central administration now, the people who are running down mm -hmm. in the Blanchard Educational Service mm -hmm. Center, those people seem to think often that I can that I can make out. I'm mean, nice people, but geez, they 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 have the idea that the schools are out there to serve them instead of the mm -hmm. other way around, and so that's a big issue because the four people on the board they believe that because that's how what they demonstrated in where they would vote and what they would support and but it's really it's really their job is to support the the classroom and to support the schools mm -hmm. and that's mixed up i've had principals tell me yeah, boy if they could just figure this part out it would work better a fourth one is uh the uh What's the superintendent's goal and what's her approach? Right, right. What are her goals laid out? They've been pretty kind of up in space, though. They have third grade reading. And here's a perfect example, I think. And third grade reading is a big goal. Get every kid reading by third grade. Mm -hmm. Well, in order to do that, you really have to have reading teachers that teach them read. Right. And you right. can't teach kids to read Mm -hmm. well and get them all in 30 kids in the classroom. You've got to move them into those classrooms with small groups and find, find the holes and teach them. But we're not doing that. You know, you need to have librarians who can encourage the reading and so forth in the school. But we're not doing that. We're doing these process-type oriented things to go after that. Another, uh, uh, an another one is the uh, the whole role of corporate education in the system. We can't do much about it in in Portland because you have the state pushing these mandates down on you. Mm -hmm. You have to do the testing and so forth and so forth. Mm -hmm. But how we deal with it is important. About uh, was it two meetings ago, I brought forth a, a, a resolution that said we need to have somebody pay attention to how we're doing this testing, which is just dominating all sorts of things in our mm -hmm. educational system. And I said, we need to look at it. We need to figure out where the problems are. We need to figure out, should we be testing some children? We're putting kids on an eight-hour English test who know no English. I mean, should we be doing that? What are our alternatives? And so forth. I wanted somebody to pay attention carefully and go out and interview people and study it as we went on into the spring and the testing and that went down, voted down. Tom Curler voted for it, but that was it. That was a five to two vote. Uh, well, four to two, I think. Uh, I think Matt Morton was not there. Then you've got, uh, what do we do with the equity? A long time, we've talked a lot about equity and we have courageous conversations where mm -hmm. we go out and try and get people to look at their own feelings are based around race and based right. around equity and right. so forth, and which is fine. Uh, but now where do we go? Do we just continue to do that over and over and over mm -hmm. and over and mm -hmm. over, or do we put in uh, culturally relevant curriculum into the grade schools? Do, I mean, what do we do? How do we bring mm -hmm. about? Where do we go with that? How do we decide what equity really is in the school? Is Having every kid able to read, that seems to me kind of also equity to me. If every kid can read in every school, that's a form of equity. We have schools where we have, we have one school, I was talking to the principal, and they have 200 kids or two or more grade levels behind. Hmm. But we're not putting even any reading teachers into that school. Hmm. Hmm. I, I, so what's, what does equity, how does that work? Uh, and we've got, 
um, the principals kind of, we have uh, educational, what's the educational foundation for our schools? In other words, what are we going to have in every school? What I ma I've maintained for a long time, can't get anybody supported other than Curler, is that you have a good solid foundation and then you look at the school and then build on top of that. So mm -hmm. in other words, if you need more reading teachers, you put those in. If you need more, maybe you need uh, um, more tag. So you put that and you, you build on top of what the foundation is, but everybody gets that solid foundation. Mm -hmm. And they keep saying, well, we have that, but they don't. Mm -hmm. They're not mm -hmm. even close mm -hmm. to having that. Uh, then we have, uh, what's our approach to ESL? I, I want to get them to do uh, a newcomer. Now you say uh, ESL, that's English uh, as a second, second language. language. Right. You have uh -huh. a lot of kids come in from foreign countries. Right, they, right. they can't speak English, right, right, right. maybe. Right. And we just will in the sixth grade through the twelfth grade, we just toss them in the classroom. We just toss them in there and say, oh, the teachers will figure it out. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't work. They'll maintain, oh, we don't do that, but basically we do. Now, you do and, understand and, that and, when, when, you, when you make the point about the English as a second language, I mean, where's enthusiasm for folks who are the kids that are here? It should be English as a first language. I mean, just, 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 the, just that, the, the point of making English as a second language, you know, and as you, as you well, said, they already got on. English as the second language when they get here and then it can't speak any English. Well, but my, I'm talking about our kids in this country. Well, we have a pretty good immersion programs in Portland. They're pretty good. It's one of the things that the board that's going off the board now has done. They did a really good job on that. And the guy that I took off the board, Martin Gonzalez, he was the kind of the main guy that did that. It was wonderful. I've tried real hard to support the immersion programs. One of the reasons is because they took him off the board, mm -hmm. but uh, th those are pretty good. But I'm talking about the kid who comes in from Syria and can't speak any English, yeah. and now we don't teach him English, so that kid, uh, it, it takes him too long. By the time he's up ready to graduate, he can't speak English very well at all. We need to get him early and teach him to, to speak English dead up. And then when he goes in for the rest of his schooling, he can have a chance, get him a chance. And that, that's a question. Then the but last you, one really... you know how I feel about that English is a, the, la uh, the last one. The last one is the middle, is the middle grade program. Yeah, you'll kill middle grade. Okay. The middle grade. What do you okay. got in the middle grade? Do you okay. have sports or activities? What do you have to engage children in school? What do we have? Not much. Not what happened much. to Voc Ed? Now, you know, now, you know how Voc Ed is part of that part of that issue that's coming up. We don't have it. Are we going, yes, that's correct. Are we going to, and they call it CTE now, but are we going to have it? And Curler and I have been pushing for it, Bobby Reagan's been pushing for it, but we've kind of, it's off someplace in some program. It's not real stuff down in the schools in all cases, which is where we need it. And so that's a and that's, that's the majority a, of your kids. That's who a need, big. That's the majority of kids. Yeah, who need. no kidding, no kidding. Yeah. Anyhow, those are the, what I see as the election issues. Okay. So the question is, okay, who do you vote for if you agree on those issues, or let's talk about some of these way? folks. Okay. You know, some let's of these go people? down. Yeah, you bet. Uh, zone one is uh, that's the west hill, the southwest hills. Southwest hills. You have okay. two people running for that. Middle, middle class and better, right? Pretty it's much a, Wilson okay. High School, yeah, and a little, and little bit of Cleveland, yeah, a little bit of Cleveland. Uh, kind of comes in to sell what a little bit, right. and so you got Julia Sparza Brown, who was a professor at the at Portland State, got her doctorate in ESL and special ed, which is a fairly rare doctorate. English is a second good. language, and and uh, she's she's got the endorsement of the Portland Association of Teachers, Stanford Children. But a whole lot of people, like all four of the city commissioners, have endorsed her, hmm. and uh, and Barbara Roberts, county commissioner. She has kids in school. She has kids in school. But not, I don't. Not now. She's a little older. Uh, okay. She. I went and sat down and talked to her. She's. She's. I think well respected by. There's a lot of teachers who've had her, and they came forward to the Portland Association teacher and said, "Hey, that she was pretty good." instructor so it's somebody you could what's, what's you her endorse. background in the education is well her background is uh it, she teaches esl teachers at portland state but prior to that where was she uh she was a school teacher actually. school teacher yeah okay. and down in san diego evidently kind of a little more well-to-do area as i understand it but i wouldn't bet on it okay but uh and the problem that I saw with her because I and I personally there's two of these people that I've endorsed might as well get that disclaimer up yeah, front right, right, I endorsed right. the other guy running against her she the problem that I saw with her is that she hasn't paid any attention to the school board or this 
in that whole process ever, evidently. I mean, even now she's running for the school board and she doesn't ever go to a school board meeting. Hmm. And she's running against a, a young guy who's a college student, actually, Andrew Davidson, who was the, who was the, for a year, he was the uh, student representative on the school board. Mm. And he's a pretty sharp guy. And I knew where he was. I know where his votes would be. His votes would be uh, very close to mine, very close to the teacher association. He was a student rep at one point so, time. Right. Very and, so, and, and so I endorsed him because I'd love to have that vote, extra vote to help out. And I wasn't positive if Julius Barza Brown will be there. We'll see. It's one of the interesting things because undoubtedly with the teacher endorsement, she's probably going to win. Though Andrew is a pretty and the good money. fighter, and the money, I don't know if he's I mean, going to uh, get out there and get any money. Hardly, yeah, but, you got, but if you got to run citywide, Steve, that's a tough nut. Steve. You know, every mayoral I mean, gee, candidate. We've talked about this. Every mayoral candidate who runs in a smaller area than the Portland Public School District, the city of Portland, smaller than Portland Public School, they had every one of them had a million dollars, spent a million dollars, and I spent seventeen thousand. The guy running against me sent sixteen thousand. These guys spend fifteen, sixteen thousand. I mailed fifty thousand people. That was it. And then mm -hmm. I did lawn signs. It's all hard work, but mm -hmm. it's it's different. And and I don't see Julia Sparza Brown really working to get that money to get that money. Well, she'll together. get the money. She's gonna get the money. Oh uh, well, maybe I don't know. She, she hasn't gotten. He hasn't gotten it yet. In fact, Andrew Davidson has more money. The last time I looked, he had more money in his treasury than she did. Yeah, he still has to go over. So the I city. don't know. You know, he still has to go. Well, over see, the city. Not, I I doubt very much if they'll if to, she'll get money from the teachers. It would surprise me, even though they endorsed her. Oh, teacher. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I don't know. So that's zone one. Okay. Zone two. Uh, oh, excuse me, before you go ahead. Go ahead. How, how old is this young man? 19. 19 years old. I mean, mm -hmm. what about the maturity? Dude? Oh, yeah, it's a problem. Huh? It's a problem. Gee whiz. How did but, he do in school? But he it's, he's, good, he's a good student. The thing is about the school board, he knows more about the school board than everybody else put together well, except for Paul he Anthony besides being and Bobby teacher. Reagan. Yeah, he was sitting there. He was yeah. sitting there. He was doing the job. He uh, and he and he has his priorities straight. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of been interested in it's nice to have a college professor on there. That's great. But I want the college professor who votes right. Mm -hmm. And I know this this guy's going to this college well, student's going to vote. With the issues. Right. He's familiar with the issues. He's going to vote okay. what I deem as being right. That's why I endorse him. But okay. in being fair, he's a 19-year-old yeah, guy, yeah, a college yeah, student, yeah. and she's uh, uh, got her doctorate yeah, and, yeah. and teaches teachers. She bills herself as a teacher teachers, and she's got – but it'd be nice if she'd go to a school board meeting once in a while. I like the interview. I can't I get a better feel for it. Yeah, English give her a call. This English as a second language really bothers me. You I know, know, you know, know that, Steve. I know. I know. It, it doesn't, doesn't bother it me. Just, I, I, I want to reform it. Right. I it want to reform it. I want to reform it. Okay. But anyway, let's go. Zone two? Yeah, zone two. Zone two is the zone – now, I should say that – School board members have to run in their zone, and then you vote citywide. Right, a lot of people right, don't know that. Right, right, right. It's a crazy system. It's really crazy system. It's a crazy system. should change, right? Steve. Oh, yeah, yeah, it'd be great. <laughs> the, uh, the, this is the zone that kind of runs from Cleveland High School to Jefferson along the river. Okay. Along the river on the east side of the river. Okay. Several blocks out. Right. Uh, and, and Matt Morton was in that. Matt, yeah. Matt Morton was in that spot. And there's four people, Paul Anthony, Emma Roos. Rusak Williams, Jose Gonzalez, and John Sweeney. Who I know John I know Sweeney's running against. Yeah, 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 John Sweeney ran against me yeah, 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 at least yeah, once, yeah. maybe twice. He's good. He's, he was good. He's a good guy. I like him. But he's kind of he didn't pay much attention to the schools either, okay. getting in there and finding out. Okay. The guy who who I actually this is where this is where I endorsed somebody who was as Paul Anthony. Paul Anthony has paid attention for the last few years, and he's got the right attitudes. He's got it all together. He cares about. It. He can see through the. Uh, he can see through the smoke screen that so comes he, up. He knows he's going to be there. He's going to have his finger where it should be. And what he's kind of background he is? He's uh, actually has worked in financial stuff. He has kids in the school, but he doesn't. He doesn't have a school background. But he's gone to meetings. He's paid attention. He's all school over board the meetings place. He's oh yeah, and and he's paid attention. He's all over the place. He knows what's going on. He's got his head in the right place. He said finance too. So, so yeah, yeah, and and knows some finance. He knows about so, the money. Yeah, he knows yeah. What to do. So so that's who. And and actually, he's a good friend of mine too. Mm. So I mean, that's part of it, I'm sure. But you've got Jose Gonzalez is probably his biggest. Uh, competitor, uh, he was uh, 
the executive director and founder of the Miracle Theater Group. And uh, I've never seen him at a school board meeting. Maybe he's come. I don't, I don't hmm. know. Doesn't, he's why another he guy. Any idea why, why is he running? Have you, I spoke, don't, have you talked to him? At all? I've read all his. I've read his stuff. It's all very generalized. Mm. Uh, no idea about why is he running? Specifically, he's running to make the schools better, same as everybody else. Oh, really? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, I'll, I'll buy this for okay. now, for, for a moment. And then John Sweeney, I know who's John. a perennial kind of candidate who's there well, a lot, know, but he's, he's, he's got he his head involved. together. He gets involved. He gets involved. No, he's gets a good involved. guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. And so there you go. That's the four on that one. Then... Zone three, which is in Northwest Hills, is maybe the most interesting. I think Paul Anthony's going to have a good shot and win that, the one in zone two. So you're mm -hmm. probably going to get Julius Barza Brown and Paul Anthony. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to either, you got four people. You got Bobby Regan, who's running against, who's an old nemesis of yours, I know. From, oh, no, no, no. I, uh, I, back in I, the custodial days. I met, I met Bobby early on, but unfortunately, yeah. when we got into the custodial piece, that was a no no, as you know. That yeah, was really yeah a I know sad how note. that came out. She's, yeah, anyway. She has mm -hmm. always treated me nicely on the board, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but she's not there on the votes with mm -hmm. me. She's there on the votes when it's community oriented mm -hmm. but when it really gets down to the schools I mean she works harder than anybody on the school yeah, yeah. all she probably yeah. works harder than all other six people put together oh, yeah, she's, she's, she yeah. really works hard she's a good ambassador for the schools but when you get down into the when you get down into what how what we should really be doing in the schools themselves mm -hmm. her expertise kind of stops and instead of going for she just kind of wa waffles on mm -hmm. those things and mm -hmm. i haven't been able to bring her along for instance she voted mm -hmm. against the where i was trying to get him to look at the testing because mm -hmm. she doesn't understand in my opinion what's really taking place down in those schools there's i mean we got a mess going around mm -hmm. the testing and she doesn't you know we need to be looking at it and she's got but see she's she has a really uh strong candidate maybe uh uh woman by the name of Amy Carlson Constam. Constam is kind of old now. Portland yeah. okay. money. Oh, yeah. oh, and yeah. she's yeah. been she's been active in school foundation, that school foundation mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. all hands raised. She's done a lot of work around different youth things. She's she's got a pretty good solid the kind of solid background you look and say, mm -hmm. okay, here's a person with a really solid background mm -hmm. to be and she's probably better on the on the school stuff than Bobby Regan is. But Bobby Regan who had written letters, which the Portland Association of Teachers just were disgusted with at one point, she actually got the endorsement of the Portland Association of Teachers. Well, Reagan did? Reagan did. Well, and one of the problems, evidently, for Amy Constam was some writing she'd done around the PRS. You know, there's three things you don't do with the teachers, hmm. period. One, you don't start trying to get after PRS. What's PRS? The Public Employment Retirement System, oh. you know, where they were where <laughs> yeah. they were doing some cuts and stuff to yeah. it. And, yeah. and they, they, you don't do that. You don't go after the uh, uh, testing in terms of taking the testing and using it to evaluate teachers. Teachers mm -hmm. want absolutely none of none of that. That's mm -hmm. the two main ones. Mm -hmm. uh, you just, you, you can't do those things around the teachers. They just go, wait a minute, you can't mm -hmm. be doing that. And right now in Portland, you can't really be protesting with the teachers mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know that she's so much protesting because I don't think she necessarily is, but she didn't, the, but she committed the other kind of sin now for the Portland Association of Teachers and for the people who are kind of the, the activists, liberal activists around the mm -hmm. school system mm -hmm. a little bit, uh, or I can save our schools, those types of things. Uh, she, she was in Stanford Children, which a lot of people have, but the people who, who are, have been involved with Stanford Children and have left, they've said, I left because they were screwed up. Mm, mm, she mm. never came out and went against them, so she mm. walked into the Teacher Association being anti-PRS, basically, and, and pro-stand for children, which, mm, no, mm, no way. Mm. So Bobby you, Regan we, even came out. Okay, we got, we got one more, one right? More. Okay. And then we go, we'll t we're going to take an extra three minutes or so, so we're going to okay. get this last candidate before we take a quick break. And the okay, last guys. one is, uh, well, there's also Gretchen Hollins in there, who was a project manager for projects in the Portland Public Schools, mm -hmm. but but those two first two people were running big time campaigns. Mm -hmm. Gretchen came in late. Wes Soderback, 
who you maybe are familiar yeah. with, and he's kind of runs for different offices. Yeah. And yeah. Not going to have yeah. a. But not going to have much involved, of an effort. They, still they get involved. involved. And they're if not bad people, signs, yeah, but they, they got to come in. You got to have a chance to win. You got to come in and actually yeah, run a campaign. But you got to have money too. Well, you got to get <laughs> find the money. I've seen a lot of bright people, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. One sitting right here. But anyway, we're going to go on and take a short break, folks, and we'll be right back to continue this discussion with Steve. English as a first language. Was that the whole idea? Was that part of the platform? We'll be right back. Mike Rosen. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. back folks again I'm Bruce Broussard the Oregon Voters Digest and we're just going to continue on uh, uh, we were talking about elections we talked about issues that were relevant and uh, we're going to get more into that after this is but we got one one more zone that I want Steve to go on and throw some reflections on okay Steve go on zone seven which is the east which is the southeast zone runs the whole length from Selwood all the way out okay in the school district on the east side uh, that's where Greg Belial has is now leaving and he ran against no opposition. Hmm. But now they're bringing another guy, and he's quitting. Who Who's bring, quitting? Bring, you said well, I mean, another there, there's another guy coming in to run, and okay. that's Mike Rosen, and he's running against no opposition. So in eight years, they've only got two people who would run out of, out of Zone 7. Well, how, did, how, did, how, did, how did Bilal Mike, do? Uh, Bilal was not very good. He spent I mean, the first six months, in my opinion, he spent the first six months trying to stop me from saying anything or bringing forth any motions or having yeah. anything, any input at all. What's where he spent six months, did a pretty good job of it, actually. Yeah. yeah. But Mike Rosen is coming. Mike Rosen's a different guy. Hmm. Mike Rosen's a pretty smart guy. He's a nice guy. And he, uh, I think he's going to be there on a lot of the issues. Hmm. He, he needs a little more... Uh, he there, he needs a little more uh, seasoning around the state issues mm -hmm, and those mm -hmm, things mm -hmm. a little bit, but he's a good guy. Why is he running? Forward. In your opinion? Oh, oh I think make he, a point? I, I think he's got. I think he cares about the schools, and he's and the schools have. It's not hard to sit back, look at Portland Public Schools, and say you guys are screwing up, in a lot of areas. And I he he looked and saw that. You know, they were screwing up a lot. We're screwing up in a lot of areas. The, all the ones that I mentioned earlier in the show here. Has he been has he been an outspoken component? Has he gone to he's, school board meetings? He, he yeah, he's been has better. He he's been better. He's been better on that stuff. He is uh he he pays attention, but he hasn't been involved in the same way. In some cases he has. He's been involved. I'll give you an idea. Involved. I'll give you an idea. Like the arch tech. Did he did he come before the school board and, and, I don't and remember complain the about arch, the arch tech? I don't remember. He did work on what the the OFAS group, which has been involved with uh, working with the bond and things like that. So, yeah, he, yeah he's been, he's been, it, he's involved. He's, is he going to be okay? I think he's going to be okay. I think he really is. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm mm -hmm. hoping because there's, it'd be the fourth guy. Well, what's his background in the classroom? Has he been in the classroom? No, children. Same children. children what, just his own children? Or what? But he's, he has done some work some policy work around education. I have a friend by the name of Rex Hagens, who's one of the better educators in the state of Oregon, probably, mm -hmm. and has been involved for years and years and mm -hmm. years. And he worked with Rex Hagens' 
quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, in some policy work they were doing that was around education. Rex thinks he's a real nice guy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping. I don't know him that well. And what about the teachers' union in this important public school? I mean, how do they feel about most? Just go down well, the, the teacher, line. Well, the teachers' union went off? for Julius Barza Brown. Okay, that's Went one. for Paul Anthony. Zone two. That's two. Uh, zone two went for Paul Anthony. Zone three uh, went for Bobby Reagan. And zone seven, they went for Mike Rosen. Mike Rosen. So that, yeah, which is, uh, that's it. That's now, it. Now, yeah. the only place I disagree with them, well, I didn't, I haven't endorsed anybody in zone, in zone three, the Bobby Reagan race, because mm -hmm. I think it's a toss up pretty much. Uh, and I disagreed with them on the Andrew Davidson thing. And so did a lot mm -hmm. of teachers. Mm -hmm. but. Now, did you speak to each, in, in, any of these individuals? Have you talked, have you spoken to any? Yes, quite a few. I, quite a few. Yes, I've sat down with Julius Barza Brown for quite a while. Okay. I, and I sat down with Mike Rosen. I sat down with Amy Constam. And, of course, mm -hmm. I, I, I've sat down many times with Andrew Davidson. And and uh, I I know John Sweeney pretty well. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Bobby Reagan, of course, has been on the board. So mm -hmm. I've, I've got a good line on her. Okay. I'll tell you what bothers me. Over the whole thing. Talk to me. Don't. You've been here for quite some time, Steve. You know we've been. We've you, been go, this. you go on this. You're running for the school board. Right. Right. Go to a couple meetings. Yeah, right. Exactly. I would hope uh, so. And, and, if you're going to run for the school board, I mean, this is a big. Well, yeah, you know, it's, it's not. It's, I don't agree necessarily. It's this super important office, but it's an important it's a office. Very important. It's, it, our and it's got. It's our and future, it, yes, Steve. it is. We're educating all the kids, and you have a community. That as eighty percent don't have children, so you got to pay attention to them too. Yeah, right, exactly. uh, but people will come and run for the school board, and they haven't gone to school board meetings. They don't know Matt Martin from Greg Belial from mm -hmm. Tom Curler. Mm -hmm. They don't. They don't have any idea of what's taking place in the relationship between the school board or how the school boards functioned or anything. And yet here we come. I'm going to run for the school board, and they run with really generalized yeah. opinions. Uh, for instance, I got a, just. I'll read you just a couple. This is from uh, Julia Sparza Brown's uh, website. Okay. okay? She, she says, improved educational outcomes. We must take responsibility for continually improving our school systems to improve our outcomes. Now, that's, that's this woman is running for the school. So how are they going to do that, right? Prepared, prepared and supported teachers. Access to high quality teachers this is a key to our children's success. Well. I guess that's true, isn't it? But what are we going to do to get that? Good governance and responsible stewardship. I take very seriously the school board's responsibility as a steward of our precious educational resources. I am dedicated to strong fiscal oversight. And what needs to change to do that better? What do we need to spend the money? Not, nothing. Uh, and engage families and communities. Families and communities prepare our children to enter school ready to learn. Now, if you go through her website, you look for what she's going to try and bring right, forward right. or what she's suggesting right, we're doing wrong right. or what she's suggesting that we should be doing. There's nothing yet right. all for school, all for of the city councilor. Well, you know, yeah, all right, for right, the city right. councilor. All, 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 uh, all supported her, all endorsed her based on, well, they've never been to school board meeting either. Right. So, <laughs> so, uh, 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 how would they know? It's just, uh, and, and it, well, but if you look at Andrew Davidson stuff, he says, well, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need this, because he knows. But it's not just that one, it's all the way through. Amy Constam has some good solid stuff. Bobby Regan has ideas of what she wants to do. Paul Anthony's really on top of stuff. He really is, uh, I think, more than anybody else, probably in the whole thing. Well, those people are on top of stuff. Okay. Everybody else. Okay, but let's go, down, let's go down the line with each one of those. those in the, I'll, I'll ask you this question and just go down the line with each okay. one of them from the standpoint of saying, what's their employment? What's the what? The employment. Their employment. Are they employed? I mean, and give me some sort of an age kind of a situation. And do they have kids in school? Go down the line. Okay, right down, I mean, I'm not line. sure I'm going to be able to do the kids in school perfectly. Okay. Yeah, Julia Sparza Brown is a professor at the Portland State University. So she's and still working. She's yeah. She's a and professor. She's an older person. She's an old person. But no, but you know, no kids. Fifty. I don't know. No she's kids. Forty-three. No kids. Forty-eight. No kids. 56. No kids. Well, she's had kids. She's but had she has, kids. They're but not no in kids the school. school. No kids in school. Okay. Andrew Davidson. He was in school last year. So he was in school. So he has. He was got some sense. So he's got some sense. <laughs> so, okay, yeah. Yes. So, uh, Paul Anthony has kids in school. Was he say he's in school? Okay. Yeah. He's a student. He's a student. Right. And Paul Anthony has kids in school. Emma Rusak Williams. What's his background? What was he doing now? Is he working? 
He's the chief financial officer for the Shannon Pratt Valuations Incorporation. He doesn't long. <laughs> that's, if, if that's your job, that's your job. Yeah. What he does, what Paul Anthony has done, though, he's a member of Oregon Saber Schools, for okay. instance. Okay. He pays attention to all this stuff. Yeah, okay. He yeah, writes okay. about it, thinks about it. He he's on okay. top of it. You could bring an issue to him, and he would have an idea. He understands. Goes to school board meetings. He goes to school board meetings. Okay, he talks good. to school board. I mean, I've talked to him many, 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 many okay. times. All right. uh, and, uh, Keep going you, down the line. Uh, Emma Rusak Williams. And here's why she's running for the school board. I, I brought this up. And nothing wrong with this, but she's running for basically two reasons. One of them is that she she says, why I'm running for the school board and what qualifies for me for this position. The first part is very simple. I'm a mom to a young family. It's a job I take very seriously, and being a member of the school board affords me the opportunity to make sure my children are getting the best education they can. My goal is to be proactive, not reactive. I have the opportunity to make the school system the best it can be before my kids are enrolled, not after. Mm -hmm. So she's running, I guess, it sounds like, for her kids, her kids when they enroll. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of other kids in the there's 48,000. Yeah. That's only yeah. two. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing wrong with her. She's probably very nice. I don't know her very em well. Employed? Uh, yeah. Let's she, employ me. Let's see. She's uh, she's program. She works for Metro. She was a... Uh, Historic Cemetery Program Coordinator. She's probably a very smart woman. Mm. But she's she also said she's going to spend less than $750, so she's not really what you would take as a serious candidate, yeah. I guess. She, she goes on to say, though, in her own behalf, on that same post. I pulled that first out because a lot of mm. people seem to run for their children. Yeah. Uh, and uh, she went on to say she has some background in, in uh, uh, government type programs and working through. So, and I think that's probably true. She may be really sharp. I'm not 100% positive. Jose Gonzalez, executive director and founder of Mark uh, Theater Group. Theater group in town. what, teachers? Or is he a, is no, it's a theater group. Does he have kids it's, in school? I don't know if he has kids in school. I really don't. I haven't seen any of them on his website stuff. Okay. Uh, John Sweeney is retired, oh, same John, as me. John, very, very Bobby well. Reagan, she's Reagan. the board member. She, she basically she's does the school board as yeah. her as that's her, her that's her employment in a way i mean she does it's good and she does she she, she just resigned as the oregon school board association uh the chairman of the board of the oregon school board association because okay. she wanted to spend more money particularly on the upcoming bond if we do a bond mm. uh and then amy carlson constam she's she's basically been involved in a lot of uh, uh Volunteer work mm -hmm. and so forth as a parent, mm -hmm. and okay. and is and and it's done some. She's okay. been on some pretty good stuff. Uh, Kids in school, yes. Okay. Couple. All right. Employment. Uh, Gretchen. Employment. Uh, I think she's she's uh, working as a, a volunteer on things. Well, not, so she's unemployed. Really, no, okay. Well, she's going. not unemployed. She has children at home. Uh, we got double him. Give him a double. Gretchen, Gretchen Hollins is the project manager for Portland Public Schools. She actually, she would have to resign that to be on the school board, but she actually her. works for that, which gives her a little edge. If yeah. she'd have come forward early and run a real campaign, she would have won. No, she probably couldn't beat both these people because they both are going to have a lot of money. Oh, uh, I see. She might have been, got a lot of support. Okay, okay. Uh, and then Wes Soderback is a systems integrator mm -hmm. at Soderback Associates. Okay. So I'm not sure that's correct. They have that okay. on the material that okay. I found. Uh, and Mike Rosen's Watershed Division Manager, Portland Bureau of Environmental Services. Okay. Now, we, another another little quick little, little test aspect of it. What about the arts tax? Anything? Did you I, don't, no, I don't have anything on the arts yeah, tax. Nothing on the arts tax? Nothing on the arts tax. How do you feel about the arts tax? I feel like they are, should have done exactly what they said they were going to do. And what is that? Which is put the arts, put <laughs> the artists is. in the classrooms consistently all the way through from beginning to end. And it should have been clear how much. So they haven't done that, right? Well, yes, they have. They have done it. Yeah, but you it. said that they, they, but they, they But, well, no. They, but you said. No, they have done that. But they didn't but put it's it all not, in there. It doesn't necessarily meet what people, ex, their exactly. people's expectations. Exactly. exactly. Was what it would was. You be, would you be in The, the money they got, they used it, but. They didn't do the meet people's Why don't you, expectations. Well, how do you feel about giving the money back to the people? No, I'm, I like the arts. Why don't we repeal that? No, I like the arts. Why don't we repeal that piece? No, huh? put the arts. I like the arts. Huh? We need the arts. But a lot of folks feel that way. You know that. We need, you. well, sure. But, because but, they don't, they're not doing, they're doing the right thing with the money. We need the arts. They are putting in the arts. It's just not meeting their expectations of what people thought. Give us an school, example so. of what kind of art are they doing right now. Well, they're doing. Give us an example. Well, they're doing regular, and some schools are, have art teachers who teach you. 
how to draw and paint and teach you the arts. Well, isn't that part of that responsibility to begin with, with the money that they've got? Well, it was just became helpful money because they're really they're helpful really money. they're always finding money. Steve. They're really struggling around trying to get enough people into the classrooms to meet what they need should be having okay. in the schools. Okay. And so the arts tax was just here. You go. Here's a little more. Thank you. You know, you know, question mark. You know it's still yeah. the big question mark. On I still piece. think there's some. Problem and how they slipped it in there. You know how they slipped that art tax in there. Well, they really slipped it to us, Steve. Well, and they messed tax. it. Well, they also messed it up in that people like me. They said I didn't have pay because I was retired. It's crazy. It's yeah. Crazy. And really? so, yeah, I paid anyway, but you didn't have to. You didn't have to. Not if you. What, what about now, now, what, what about another very important issue? And I'm talking about vocate. How do how do you feel those? Do you talk with those people all about that? Uh, Bobby Reagan's good on it. She's good on Vogue Yep. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, what Paul about Anthony's great on it. Okay. Uh, Andrew Davidson's terrific on it. Okay. Uh, Mike Rosen, I haven't, I'm not sure how good he would be. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think he would be good on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think Amy, and I, I imagine Gretchen Hollins would be good on it. I don't know Soderbeck or Sweeney. Sweeney probably be good on it. Okay. And, and, uh, I'm not sure. Julia Sparza Brown when I talked to her. Okay, she, okay. She doesn't kind of know what's going on in schools anyhow, so it's hard for her to okay, okay. have okay. a disappointment. Okay. I mean, you know, what's and going what, on? What now? about my, 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 my issue? English as a first language. I mean, you, you talked to them about that? Did you share that with them? Andrew Davidson would be, have his head straight on that, and so would Paul Anthony. Uh, Bobby Reagan has not been supportive of the things that I've tried to do which is basically stop sending children into classrooms when they're mm -hmm. uh, in the ninth grade with no English mm -hmm. and expecting teacher after teacher after teacher to work with them and the kid comes out not being able to really do anything mm -hmm. because he doesn't mm -hmm. know English. Mm -hmm. And I've tried to get them to set up a, early, a newcomers. We have a newcomers, about 20 some people in it. I want to set up a newcomers with a couple hundred where we take children as they come in get them in that newcomers, we convince their parents. It's against the law to put them in there without their parents okay, but we convince their parents that that's where they ought to be and then we teach them English in a shorter period of time so then they can go out for the rest of their high school years, say, and actually take part in the now classroom. You gotta, you gotta remember that you made one little mistake with that piece, you know what it was? The parents don't speak English. Well, some Are you of gonna the put them in the are. class too. <laughs> if, if you put, if you have a, a newcomer center, and you have a lot of children centered in one spot, then you're going to be able to get a lot of other people to come in to work with you. Okay, so we, they're spread all over the school. It's very hard to get a lot of people, say, from the Somali community to come in okay. and work with you. Great. Yeah, so you can't do it spread all over school. But you put them in one spot and you work on that, you can really spend, uh, I, I want to spend up to 18 weeks, which is about a half a school year. How much money is that? Teaching is. Well, it's going to be it's going to be some money, but it's not going to be as much because they won't be in this classroom over here. They'll be here. I think so I see. Be I, I, I know a fit for the art tax now. That program. There you go. <laughs> so now we can, now the people can relate. You, know? <laughs> you, got, any better, you got any better questions here, Bruce? <laughs> well, well, I don't like the art tax. You know. But that's okay. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's okay. America. Okay. You, you get to choose what you like and don't like. America. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm talking about, this ESL stuff. I mean, <laughs> Well, the, the thing about ESL, okay, is if you don't teach children English well and get them, they're back in society anyhow. And they're a really a drag on society if you can't speak any English. Yeah, but what about the unless kids, it's Spanish. What about the kids who are here, it's, it's, who are it's, here, born here, the whole nine yards? They've got, they got problems. They are not educated. They are feeling that. I mean, they're feeling it. I don't disagree with you. Okay, so. At least they're teaching. They're so this speaking priority English. Priority at, least was. at least they're speaking English. It's not a, I don't see it as a this or that. I see it as that we have a responsibility to educate all the children in the school district. I'm just saying all prioritizing the, the list. That's all I'm saying. Well, I don't think you can we'll prioritize your, your kid over my kid. I don't think that priority is the way you want to prioritize. What you want to prioritize is every child the best that you can do by them. So if a kid comes in and can't speak English, and you don't work with that kid and get him so he can get an education, then he goes out. But you don't he goes that, out. You don't and think that's a same, drag. You don't think that's a drag, if you will, on the, on the individual. It's a drag the kid on everybody. Been here beforehand. Well, you and I, you and I sat here in the 1990s, okay, and we knew we talked about this, and you know this as well as I do. 
that what had taken place in the Portland school system is that we had prioritized the children who were in the Cleveland, Grant, Wilson, and Lincoln clusters. We prioritized them, and we put more money into those schools in terms of, of it wasn't so much totally more money, as but the priority was there. Those were our priorities, and we know that, and that's not right. What's right is that we try and educate all the children, whether your kid goes to Lincoln and your, their dad's a doctor and their, their mom's a doctor, or whether they're in a school where they're, they're going in a poor part of town where the, where the mother's on drugs and the dad's in jail. Those kids have, we, those should be equal educational priorities. And so any kid we get from any foreign country we don't get to decide who comes into our school district. They send them in. And so a kid from a foreign country, the priority on that kid's education should be the same as Lincoln High School kid or the, or the kid who who's, was born here. Because they send them in, they're our responsibility. That's the way I look at it. And, and that's the only way that I've ever looked at it, really. Every kid should be equally prior, prioritized. And when I go down this list, I want, I want school board members with me on that. Well, I, Steve, I, I understand your passion. I guess the only thing I'm saying is that when you start thinking about those kids that you, you make reference to, with reference to the poor kids and whatever, they're from here, and they've been struggling for years. Oh, yeah, Years absolutely. and constantly studying. Absolutely, I don't and disagree. So I'm just saying, to, to take a kid that's coming out, in most cases when they're coming through, with reference to Americanizing these kids, they are basically from middle class and, and better with any other country coming to this, this No, this not country. if you're from the Somalia. Well, hey, but still, they, they, I mean, you know, not they were you're... selected ones that were sent here. Well, and I, and I'm they're not, no, they got, we're getting kids who haven't had any education at all when they show up. Yeah, but my, but my point is that the ones who have been here, when you start talking about reading, it's comprehensive reading, right? And so you would, you would suggest, that I would suggest that those kids who have been here have more of a shot in, in, in terms of comprehensive reading than the kid who was here who never had exposure to this country. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you say that? Wouldn't you say Well, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So consequently, why not go on and continue to focus here like we were doing in the past and then put the kids in the well, school and then they learn accordingly. When, when I agree with it, it's also basically a lot of kids who came in very well educated from other countries, maybe they have a good shot too. Some of my best students were, were kids from the Ukraine who weren't born in America and they became by, by the eighth, eighth grade when I had them, when I was teaching in, in uh, Lane Middle School, they were terrific. My best student I ever had was a little girl who wasn't born in America, was from Ukraine. I mean, she was not even better, she better at everything. Yeah, they got that technical skill though too. She had about everything you ever would okay, want. Okay, okay. It, well, like I said, it's, it's an ongoing matter. You know, let me ask you this, again, for, for, the, for the viewing public here. They've got to vote for some of these people. They've got to try to vote for the best person that would bring, if you will, to talk to the issues that we're talking to, and that is making sure they educate our society here. Because people are constantly worrying about the folks that are coming in here and taking the jobs that are nearly in the past. We were, people, we were actually getting folks ready, if you will, for those jobs. So what, what, what do you say to the, to the voting public out there in terms of who should they be voting for? What's the, give, give, give me some gut meat and potato type stuff. That, that a person should be looking at a candidate. Should, should they be people that are able to knock on the door, show that in fact that they've gone to the school board meetings and they've got kids in the classroom, they, they've got an educational background. And uh, Are you getting my drift? Yes, exactly. Talk, talk and I'm, I'm, I know you. I'm going back. I'm going you. back to what I just said. No, really the people you should vote for are the people who take every kid's education seriously. Okay. and want to educate every child to the best of their potential. Okay. That's who I want on the school board. Okay. And the and everybody will say I want to do that, but not everybody wants to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and nor do they actually uh, are they actually able to put themselves aside and do that. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. Paul Anthony can do that. I really believe that. If, if, let's say, for instance, the voters say, say, say uh, uh, Bruce, uh, you think I could I have access to Steve? Look like he's very knowledgeable. He's on the school board. He's got background. He's got history. He's very. He, 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 he's come from an area where he, he knows both sides of the both, both sides of the community, if you will, and whether they be poor or well to do or whatever. He's about kids and whatever. Can they call you? Sure, they can call. Give a number. Five zero three, two eight five. Five four three seven. I'm okay. in the phone book. Okay. Who has a phone book anymore? But you can also find my information on Portland on on the uh, uh, 
Facebook, right. Portland, it's Steve Buell, comma, Portland School Board member, and if you go under, uh, what is it, about, about, right. I think, right. you go in there and it has my phone numbers and stuff, yeah. Don't you, you have a me. website of some sort? That can I don't have a website, but that's what I write on. Yeah, I write right. on that all right. the time. And, and you can in have fact, access if you call the, the board secretary, I've instructed her to give my phone number to anybody who calls good, 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 except good, for good. the mafia. You know, and that's very important. And so I so I say so I say to the to to folks out here who are gonna be voting, if you will, that's a very important piece. In fact you might want to share, if you will, this particular show. You can email this show because we're on YouTube. You can email this show to your, your neighbors to your, and, you know, across the board because it's a very important piece. Even though that the majority, as you say, the majority of the parents here in the Portland metropolitan area, uh, you know, they don't have any kids, if you will, right? 80%. 80% of them. That's quite a bit, you know what I mean? So, yeah. so it's not going to... So you have to take them into account. you got to take them into account also, too. And, and again, from their, their standpoint, that's very important because they, too, are looking for employment. Oh yeah, they're looking for the employees, and I, the folks. The fact of the matter is that we are ready and whatever. But Steve, it's always a pleasure to, to have you on and giving us an update this way. We get nothing. You're the only access we have. You know what I'm saying? You know how my feelings are about this whole piece. And um, but we want to thank you very, very much for, for giving us this time, and and hopefully the voters are listening to what you're saying, and and you've given them your phone number and this, that, and the other. Now it's up to them. It really is up to them. And if you want to give a kid a fair shot across the board. You might want to consider uh, some of the things that, that Steve was sharing with you. But again, it's very, very important. And read the material. What would you suggest? Read that voter's pamphlet? Is that the best thing? Voter pamphlet is, is of course, the best thing you can get your hands on. But right. most of these candidates, not all of them have a Facebook page, and some of them have websites. But like I say, it's a lot of it's just in generalities. And you yeah. really can't tell them apart. Okay. It's very hard. And most people can't even tell you who's on the school board, yeah, let alone who, what are the, what are the, what should you take into account when you vote? I was trying to share some of that. Yeah, but yeah I know. I it's know. tough. But then I guess the other, the other side of the coin is that T Steve has devoted his time. He should be retired. He actually he's retired, but he's volunteering. This is a volunteer slot. This is not, this is not a paid yeah, position. Yeah, but you do volunteer for it. You ask for it, yeah, so yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. But I mean, I never worry still, about it. But still, you're not getting paid, and that's very important. And that's one, so the person who, who runs for the school board has to be responsible enough to say, hey, look, I can do this job because I have the time and I have the money. Because that's basically the bottom line. Fair. Oh, yeah. To run for the school board, okay. you have you to, have, to have, have the time. The time. And you the time. probably need the money, too, okay. or someplace you can All get right. the money. Steve, thank you very much. Thank you. Folks, very much. Hey, get out and vote. Send this out to your folks, okay? Have a good one. Take care. See you next week.